Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Indizor Education. Um, I would like to present a couple of problems uh, um, dedicated to binary distributions, binomial distributions. And um, as usually, I do encourage you to uh, try to solve these problems just by yourself. Look at the unizor.com uh, for this lecture and uh, there are problems presented in the notes um, with solutions, but don't really pay attention to solutions first. Just try to solve it yourself. And then, obviously, after that, problems are really very simple. And then you can read whatever the notes said or uh, listen to this lecture. So, a few problems related to binary distributions of probabilities. Um, okay, the first problem is we have uh, certain binary experiments where the probability of success equals to 0 0.1 and we conduct 100 different experiments. So my first exercise, it's not really a problem, it's really like exercise um, uh, related to the lecture which uh, um, I made on binary present and uh, minor binary distributions. So the first uh, uh, exercise which I would like actually to pay attention to is to evaluate um, the uh, expectation and standard deviation of the random variable which is the number of successes out of these 100. So again, we have 100 experiments. The probability of success in each of them is 0 0.1. And the random variable we are talking about is number of successes out of this 100. Can it be 0? Yes, obviously it can be 0, or it can be 100, or it can be anything. Question is, what is the, uh, the average, the mathematical expectation of this number? Well, um, as we know from the lecture, which was about this binary distribution, um, the expectation equals to number ex of experiments times the probability of success in each one of them. So, basically, this is just an exercise in multiplication of these two numbers, and obviously it's 10. Well, I mean, it's kind of reasonable to expect that if 1 tenth is the probability of success, then out of 100 experiments, on average, you will get 10 successes. Okay. Now, what's the uh, uh, standard deviation? All right. Now, we know that variance is equal to n times p times 1 minus p. And standard deviation is equal to square root of n times p times 1 minus p, which in this particular case is square root of 100 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.9, which is 9, so square root is 3. This is 9, obviously. So that's it. I mean, it's a very simple exercise on um, the theoretical material which was describing the expectation and uh, standard deviation of this uh, uh, distribution, of this binary distribution, uh, which basically is a 100 experiments, Bernoulli trials, as we are saying. All right? Now, the second and the third exercises which I have are basically about the same thing. So I will leave the formulas intact. And now let me formulate the second problem. Let's consider there is a machine which is manufacturing some parts for the car, for instance, car parts. Now, um, we basically um, would like to evaluate the number of 
uh, parts which we have to take for basically verification for checking how they are made um, if we would like to collect out of this group of uh, n parts which we select we would like to um, to make this n uh, such a number that on average we will have d defective parts if we know the probability of uh, manufacturing a defective part as p so again we know how machine is working we know the quality of the machine and the quality of the machine we are measuring by the probability of having a defective part now knowing this probability i would like to know how many samples how many parts i should take from the uh, whatever was manufactured to collect on average d defective parts well let's just think about it. if probability in this case it's also a bernoulli experiment and um, the meaning of this bernoulli experiment is whether the part which we are selecting is defective or not and defective probability is p so if we choose n um, parts for uh, for for verification for checking uh, the quality um, and the probability of defective one is p then the average number of defective parts out of n will be calculated using this formula right but in this case we know how much on average we would like to have we would like to have d number of defective parts and the question is what should n be well again if n times p is equal to d in this particular case so we know that on average we would like to get d defective parts then obviously all we have to do is solve this with uh, for, for n and n is equal to d divided by p so if you would like for instance in the previous case we have 0 0.1 percent uh, 0 0.1 uh, probability of uh, uh, having a defective part which is actually a very bad quality it means 10 percent of the entire parts is going to be defective so that's very bad actually but in any case if i would like to on average um, get for instance five defective uh, parts out of group question is how big is the group the group should be 50 5 divided by 0 0.1 so i have to take 50 parts and on average out of each 50 i will get five defective so that's the second problem this is basically the formula which i would like to use in this particular case to determine number of um, parts which i have to take or if you wish number of experiments if i would like to have on average d defective part or d uh, uh, events probability of which we know being as p but this is rather unusual situation when we know the probability this is really kind of strange what is more um, practical problem is if we would like to evaluate the quality of the machine what do we do well we choose some kind of a n a rather big number and we take the n uh, parts as a sample and we verify each one of them we check the quality of them and we find out that there is a d defective part out, defective parts out of this n on average which means we are repeating this group of n again and again and again and then we have different number of defective parts but we can average it out and we will get that the average is d and for instance we do this rather big number of times so d is a really good variation of our average question is what's the p what's the probability of um, of any particular part to be defective well again let's just use this formula and we so and solve it for p and again that's kind of natural if out of each group of let's say 100 parts you have three defective 
Well, it's a good, on average, it's a good uh, estimate that the probability of uh, um, defective part is 3 hundredths, 0 0.03. So that's my, again, third exercise. These are not really the problems. These are exercises in this formula that the number of, uh, the average number or expectation uh, of successes if you know the number of experiments and you know the probability, then the, uh, the average is equal to their product. All right, now, now we have a little problem. It's really a very simple one, but here is, here is how I, I, I would like to present it. Let's say you have two dice, normal fair dice, six different numbers. Now. Uh, if I roll two dice, I consider if the sum is not equal to 7, it's a success. And if the sum equals to 7, it's a failure. In one roll. Now, I am a casino. And I basically would like to invent a new game. So my new game is... I take these rolls and I will roll it 10 times. Roll two dice, a pair of dice, 10, 10 times. Question is, how many successes and failures will be? So, as a casino, I'm staging the following rule. If the number of failures is less than 2, you win. Otherwise, house wins. So let's say the bet is one bitcoin or whatever, pound sterling, dollar, whatever. So you put this one Bitcoin um, and then you roll a pair of dice 10 times. If the number of uh, failures, which means number of cases when the sum of two numbers is equal to 7, is less than 2, which means 0 or 1, then, um, then you win. Otherwise, the house wins. So if you win, the house pays you one Bitcoin. If you lose, the house takes away the Bitcoin that you bet. That's the game, all right? Question is, is it a good game for the house? Or for you, for the same token? Um, well, basically, it, it boils down to a variation of the probability of winning the game, right? So the probability of um, having either less than two or, or two or greater uh, number of wins and that would give you basically the uh, the base to evaluate whether the game is good for your bet or for a house so let's evaluate this probability now the first thing which we should we should determine is since we are talking about number of failures what's the probability of failure so what's the probability of sum of two um, numbers on two dice to be equal to seven. That's the failure. So if the sum is equal to failure uh, to seven, that's a fail. So what's the probability of this failure? And then we can um, use whatever the logic we can to evaluate the number of failures out of ten rows. Okay. If you have a number seven as a sum it can be accomplished in the following um, ways. One dies, one dies in one, another is in six, or two and five, or three and four, or four and three, or five and two, or six and one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we have six different combinations of the numbers on two dies which result in seven as a sum. Now, how many combinations 
if you have two dice, how many combinations of pairs of numbers? Well, six on one, six on another, so you have 36, right? So the probability of sum to be equal to seven, which is a failure actually, is equal to one, two, three, four, five, six out of 36, which is one, six. Okay, fine. So we have determined that the probability of failure is one, six. Which means that the probability of success is 5, 6, right? Whatever adds it up to 1. All right, fine. Now we have to evaluate the case with 10 different times. We roll, um, we, we make this experiment 10 times. The probability of failure and the success in one particular experiment is 1, 6 and 5, 6 correspondingly. So the question is, what's the probability to have less than two failures? Well, that means it's a probability to have a uh, number of failures to be equal to 1 and probability of number of failures to be, to be equal to 0 and to 1. So sum of these two is the probability of number of failures to be less than two, and that's the probability of winning, right? So this is the probability of win. Well, let's count separately this and this. So what's the probability of have zero failures? Well, it means that 10 times in a row, I succeed. So 10 times in a row, the probability of success is five, six, and it should be multiplying one after another after another because this is the probability of a combined event and all events are independent so we're rolling the dice obviously independent of each other and uh, so the probability of this is equal to 5, 6 to the power of 10 10 times we should succeed so 10 times the probability of 5, 6 should be repeated that's why we put 5, 6 in the 10th power now, what's the probability of having one failure? Well, one failure can be on the first row, on the second row, on the, on the third row, etc., etc., on the tenth row. These are all independent cases. So we have one out of ten. It can be number one, number two, number three, etc. And the probability of it is equal to one six, right? That's the probability of failure. Now, all other nine cases should be success. So that's the probability. So we add them together. And we get, uh, I have this calculated, 0 0.4845. Now, what does it mean? It means that the probability of winning is less than one half, which means that you will be more losing money than winning money. So basically, it's a good game for the house. And, uh, well, and that concludes this particular lecture, these particular problems. That's it. Um, now, back to unizor.com. What I suggest you to do is to go to the site again, go to the notes for this lecture, um, examine all the problems, try again, repeat in your memory how to solve these problems, especially the last one. Now, they're all very easy. The first three problems are just exercises in knowing the formula for um, average number of uh, successes in uh, uh, binomial distribution. And the, third, the, the fourth problem is just a little bit of combinatorics, if you wish. Uh, so, again, try to refresh your memory, try to do it yourself. And, uh, well, if you... Um, sign as a, as a student uh, onto the website, onto unizor.com, that would allow you to um, basically do the exams and uh, you can follow your progress if you wish. Um, well, that's it for, uh, for today. Thank you very much and good luck.